Hello, welcome to another Tonal Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today uh, has the title Summer Path. I don't know if that's its permanent title, but uh, it'll do for now. And I painted this um, yesterday, and a uh, bit of an interesting uh, tale for you on this one. Well, first of all, let's talk about some mechanics. This board is one of my textured boards, actually textured by my student, um, Ash, uh, w several months ago. Um, and uh, what it is, is two, two layers of black gesso, which is quite thick and textured. Um, now I have a video, I believe it's in the members area, um, that takes you through the whole process, and it will be in my upcoming book as well. Um, which I'm not actually selling yet, so I'm just telling you it's been written and done. And we're working on, on bringing it together. So, uh, but the process in the, in the short is uh, use a knife. I use a knife and some crumpled newspaper and basically get a nice texture. I do it in two layers. And then to finish it off, you see this uh, sort of ochre, uh, raw sienna tone. I go over it with a layer of oil paint, um, which I then gently scrape off. That's why you see a few like little dark specks. Um, now we are doing the underpainting with burnt umber, which is, uh, and it's been thinned with some of my medium, which is Archival Oils brand Odorless Lean. Um, you're working with a brush, working with a little paper towel. So why uh, Summer Path is interesting because if uh, in my reference image, which you can view in the members area, um, members video, by the way, a good one for members because it's around two fifteen two and a half hours long not excessively long um, and quite informative I like to think um, you'll see there is no path into reference I installed the path um, a reason being is like uh, I was very attracted to the composition of the trees but uh, th without the path it kind of would be what I would term an all in a row painting and those usually don't work very well um, so if you have a, a scene like that that you'd like to paint, just remember maybe a lot of times I would composite a little stream or a little road or path or something um, using Photoshop. But here I just used my imagination and it worked out great. Um, so much so that we're calling the title of the painting Summer Path. Um, so let's talk a little about this image. It has a bit of a story to it. I have painted this um, basic composition before um, and uh, it was okay. Um, I There, the same thing that was attracting me maybe six, seven years ago is the, the same thing that attracted me now, the composition of the tree forms. Um, but uh, there were some things that didn't uh, really work out and it took some time and experience for me to understand what those things are. Also, uh, remind me, I want to talk about the colors in this and what I'm doing in the sky right there. In fact, because I don't want to forget, I'll take a little detour and talk about that. So I did do a big uh, color shift with the reference, but the color in the sky turned out to be this icky greenish tone. Um, which I wasn't able to change up in Photoshop. Um, my strategy here was to make a gray, and there I used a burnt umber, um, a bit of uh, Mike's gray, which is ivory black and white, um, a little bit of raw umber, and I kind of, it's doing a stand-in for the blue, and it's doing a great job, because uh, you probably saw the thumbnail image at the fore. Um, it's basically one of these golden paintings, but I didn't turn the sky gold. Um, but I was really happy with that solution, and I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. That was another problem I solved while I was painting. And the uh, again, so you can follow this whole process as it happens live in the members area, as well as the full color mixing session where I'm basically kind of figuring out what I'm going to do there. Um, and there's something to be said for... Um, it's something to be said for having a plan, but also being able to change it up. So let's get back into, just wanted to get into that sky thing there. And I may, I may um, interrupt my um, diatribe here for some more color information for you as we go. Um, 
So yeah, I painted it before, like the composition, but uh, the off on our side, you see these trees um, off on our left. That was kind of just a row, boring. Um, I had uh, it was a very very diagonal hill, which I made quite straight. I think we still have a feeling of moving up a hill though, which is interesting. Um, uh, so I made some changes, but one of the big changes was when I put in the path, I actually created a space between the two different uh, areas of trees and it's more so that they were spaced about like that in the reference um, but what I did was it created a bit of a faded quality in the back so we have somewhere to go to and as opposed to um, just hitting this wall of trees um, in that case of course we could, could go around it um, these sorts of compositional things you know uh, there are rules, but not that not that many. I mean, you have like the steel yard rule. You have a few others. I, I get into this stuff in my in my book. But one of the main things I stress there, for better or worse, uh, actually, I was just going to say the best way to learn composition is by making a lot of paintings. And you, if you've been with me a while, you go, "Oh yeah, we know, Mike, we know." But uh, I got I got some else to say something different slightly different um, one of the other great ways to learn composition is by making studies after the masters and what you're going to get is a kind of an internal um, sort of compass right like a muscle memory and uh, uh, I have to say composition is probably one of the toughest aspects of landscape painting to master um, and there's a lot uh, landscape painting is not uh, very it's not the hardest thing in the world to do. I mean, it's not like a brain surgery or anything, but it's got a lot of aspects to it. Um, it's more complex than it, it seems to be, and people find this out when they start hunkering down and getting into painting. Um, so there you go, not just experience, but um, um, also doing master studies. You can really amp up your learning uh, super fast, yeah. Now, the other thing, uh, so I had uh, changed up the reference into this kind of golden-y thing, and I was kind of happy with that, um, except for that sky, which we able, were able to solve when we're doing the actual painting. I'm, I'm, I think the gray works off the orange really well. Um, it's a stand-in for the blue, and it's quite a warm gray as well. If it was a cool gray, um, I feel like people would start asking questions, and that's something you really want to avoid. In your work um, and uh, I'm always uh, there are not lots of hard fast rules but one of the absolute hard and fast rules is don't put things in your painting where people ask questions like why is that like that what is that things like that don't do it because you won't be there to answer those questions you might think it's okay but um, that's not the way you want to roll so uh, I would definitely internalize that rule if you need to um, tape it to your easel or whatever so that you don't forget it because that one's absolutely um, not violatable, you know, in vol in it whatever. Okay, so um, come up with some uh, my my palette. Um, one great thing is that, like the I have to say the ochre slash raw sienna tone really supported this painting great. Um, but oh, this is the other thing I want to say. So I'm in been in as you know see skyscape mode. That's what I'm calling on seascapes because they're skyscapes, um, and I still am to be honest. Uh, but. Um, I, I, I wanted to do an 8x10. I felt an in interior sort of impetus. I just got some 8x10 boards from my, my ply guy. And I wanted to do an 8x10. And I tried compositing a few scenes, uh, the skyscapes, as 8x10s. And most of the things I had selected as reference, it just wasn't good. And how do I know? Because I'm setting it up and I've had enough experience to know when uh, my intuition tells me this isn't going to work out. This isn't going to be good. It won't. It won't work out. It won't be good. And also, intuition is very much fed by experience. So... The more you do, the more you can rely on the intuition, and it's sort of a way of uh, remembering things without having to move in a linear fashion. Now, you may or may not be an intuitive person. It doesn't really matter. If you're not an intuitive person, 
um, and you learn a lesson, it might be even better for you since um, actually some of uh, the world's greatest artists were not intuitive types, they were sensor types. Um, you know, so there's a lot of different ways to go about things, but in my case, I will basically uh, remember that certain things don't work good, work well. Um, and uh, so I tried setting up these seascapes, and eventually I bailed. I sat down and I did myself a nice little panoramic seascape that day. But when I came in the studio yesterday, I was like, no, I really want to do that 8x10. And I had set this up a few days pr prior. Um, as an 8x10 thinking it would be good and I'm like no it's going to be that one and then I didn't know I was going to do in the texture I had boards prepped so um, I'm kind of recommending you do the same have reference set up could be your own photo could be someone else's photo could be a master study just have a folder full of things should be hundreds of things in there really um, but at least a few things are absolutely ready to go so that uh, you don't have this I don't know what to paint thing that's for one for two you want to have boards prepped in your studio you know um, I have textured I have smooth um, I've been working a lot on smooth my, my real strong preference has been for smooth but I totally enjoy uh, working on texture and so I said yeah this uh, this yellow ochre textured board will really support that bit of reference I said earlier and so I did made a decision right then and there that was going to be the painting uh, and I'm so glad I did because it started coming together a lot of my potential issues that I wasn't able to reconcile uh, while I'm manipulating the reference in Photoshop uh, they came together um, and it took on a bit of kind of semi um, simplified graphic approach which I'm enjoying quite a lot and uh, um, you know, there were some aspects to the composition of the trees. Uh, obviously, your any clump of trees is going to be way more complex than what I painted here. So, I feel like um, simplifying those forms is really critical to making nice paintings. Um, I could have gone maybe a little fuller with it now, but I was uh, so much enjoying what I'd come up with at the drawing stage, and that's. Uh, which you just saw me do a little while back. That drawing stage is great because you can sit there and figure things out uh, without tons of paint in your way. Yeah. Um, I will say working on the texture was totally enjoyable um, on this particular day. I have to paint a bit differently, a bit more oil, but um, in some ways the texture can do a lot of heavy lifting. Um, Without a textured board, I have to create the feeling of texture with my brush strokes. Um, where with a textured board, I, I rely way less on that. Um, and the strokes become more, I want to say illustrative, but that's not exactly right. Since we're not really illustrating here, we're creating a painting. And that's different from illustration. And I can tell you how I know because... I was a professional commercial illustrator for 13 years, so I am very, very aware of the differences between fine art painting and creating illustrations. They're not the same thing at all. The mindset's different. The approach is different. Um, so there are some things in common, though. Um, what are they, you say? Well, you have composition. You have color. You could be using a brush and paint. Um, it's really more of a mindset. It's an attitude yeah um these last little thin strokes i put on i could use a sa sable for that what i do is kind of flatten out the uh the brush and uh, just use the very edge of it um, and that did help fill things in a little bit too i was quite happy with that anyway um thank you so much for joining me today got a little bit of a zoom in there um you can see that lovely texture and these really do feel and, and look good uh, I, I really enjoy the texture. I'm so glad I went after one. And uh, probably the next painting up on the channel will probably be a uh, another skyscape, since I'm very much in skyscape mode. But it was great to to have a little um, traipse into tonalist landscape land, and uh, I was so glad I did. I'm very happy with the results, and hopefully you enjoyed watching me do it. Um, so if you did, uh, you know. And, and you can't afford to do it, you know, send me a little tip or something like that. There's a tip thank you button there, or you join the members area. It's a great way to support me. Uh, and you get a lot of value there because there's hundreds of live videos, you know, where you're 
basically if you had me in your town I mean would you be coming by for a lesson mm. well if you would then you should join the members area because uh, that's all you get you get to sit there and watch me actually paint in real time solve all these problems in real time which is invaluable I think it is uh, yeah we're just uh, repeating that a little bit so in the live portion of the video this goal you know I just yeah, I set up a little padding at the end. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Until I come back with it. Oh, this painting will be for sale in my store. Go ahead and buy it. I'm going to put a great price on, on it. Uh, we're going to do uh, uh, 2 dollars on this one. Anyway, American, U.S., eh, shipping included. Anyway, until I come back with another video, do me a favor, do me a solo. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones, and stay out of trouble. God bless you and your family.